In this video, we're going to learn about the return early pattern in C. So the return early pattern is also known as the fail fast rule. The return early way of writing a function is to return the expected positive result at the end of the function. And the rest of the code at the beginning of the function will check to see if conditions are met and stop the execution of the function if they're not met. Normally when writing a function, we might think to first check that the data is valid. And then if it is valid, performing some work on that data. The issue is that if we write our if statement conditions to check if the data is valid, as might seem more natural, then the code that stops the function is left to else cases towards the end of the function. As we check more and more conditions, our code can get less and less readable. Let me show you what I mean. Let's create a function to return true or false, whether or not there are at least some number of occurrences of a letter and a string. So first to help us out, we'll include a few libraries We'll include the string.h library, which includes the string length function strlen that will allow us to find the length of a string. We'll include the ctype.h library, which includes the isAlpha function, which will check to see if a character is a letter or not. We'll also include the stdbool.h library, which will allow us to use the bool type and the values true and false. And the function is going to return a bool we'll call the function min letter count. The function is going to accept as an argument a string. So we'll have car string for the parameter. It's also going to accept the letter. So we'll have car letter for the next parameter. And it's also going to accept a number of occurrences. So we'll have int n for the number of occurrences parameter. And the function is going to check whether or not there are at least n occurrences of this letter in this string we can define the function right here. Now the parameter letter is really only going to be valid if it's actually set to a letter. If it's set to something like an exclamation mark, that's not really valid. In that case, we could say that we expect our function to return false. We could check to make sure that that parameter is valid. We could have here if is alpha letter, where the is alpha function from the ctype library is going to return true if the argument letter is actually a letter. Otherwise, it's going to return false. Now, if it's a valid letter, we can now work with that letter. Otherwise, down here, in this else case, we could return false. And perhaps there's other validation that we may want to do. So for example, maybe n must be at least one. We could have a check here. If n is greater than or equal to one, then we're going to proceed with our algorithm. Otherwise, if it's not, we're also going to return false. And of course, these validation rules are somewhat arbitrary. We could make them differently if we wanted to. We'll have one more validation rule. We'll say that if the string is empty, in other words, if its length is zero, then the function is expected to return false. So we'll have here, if the string length of the string is greater than zero, then we'll proceed with the algorithm. Otherwise, again, we're going to return false. And here, we're using the strlen function that comes from the string.h library, and it returns the number of characters in the string that it's passed as an argument, not including the special null terminator character that ends the string. Now finally, in this if statement body, we could have our algorithm to check to see if the letter character occurs in the string at least n times. So we'll declare an int variable count and we'll initialize it to zero. This is going to keep track of the number of times the character letter occurs in the string. Then we'll declare an int variable i and we'll initialize it to zero, where i is going to keep track of the index in the string that we're currently looking at. We'll have a loop that's going to increment i with each loop iteration. So we're going to keep looking at the next character in the string with each loop iteration. We'll stop the loop when the string at the index i is equal to the null terminator character. So, so long as the string at the index i doesn't equal the null terminator character, we're going to continue the loop. Then in here, we'll check to see if the character in the string at the index i is equal to 
the letter that we're looking for. If it is, then we're going to increment the count by one. Then when all this is done, we'll check to see if the count of the character letter is greater than or equal to n. And if it is, that means there's at least n occurrences of that letter. And in that case, we're going to return true. Otherwise, we're going to return false. Now in our main function, we could call this function. So here we could have a call to min letter count, and we'll pass it a simple string, a, b, c, a, a, d. And we'll check to see if there's three occurrences or more of the character lowercase a. We'll have an if statement here. We'll have if this returns true, then we'll output here min letter count found, followed by a new line. Otherwise, we'll output here min letter count not found, followed by a new line. And then if we save, compile, and run our program, we do get min letter count found. And that's because there are at least three lowercase a characters in our string. But now if we had some invalid argument here, like for example, negative one, we can expect the function to return false. If we save, compile, and run the program, we get here min letter count not found. Now the style we chose here is sort of impacting the readability of our code here because our algorithm is indented pretty far to the right. And that's because we first performed these checks to make sure our input is valid. And some people would argue that the readability of the code has already been negatively affected with just this number of checks. Imagine that we had to do even more validation checks. The other issue is these else cases are pretty separated from the above if statement conditions. And it's kind of hard to tell which one goes with which. Now in our case here, all the else cases are just returning false, but these could be handling different errors in different ways. For example, maybe by returning different values. Now the return early pattern is going to solve this problem by instead having if statements at the top of the function that are going to terminate the execution of the function, in this case by returning, if the input is invalid. So we're going to sort of invert our conditions. Let me show you. I'll delete all these else cases here. And then I'll actually tab over all of this algorithm code here. Then here, we'll actually invert these conditions. So we'll have here, if not is alpha letter. So if it is not the case that this letter car variable stores a letter character, then in that case, we're going to return false right here up at the top of the function. Then here, we could invert this condition. Instead of if n is greater than or equal to one, we'll check to see if the input is invalid. So if n is less than one, then again, we're going to return false here. We'll do the same thing with this condition. If the string length of the string is less than or equal to zero, then we're going to return false. Now this function is going to function exactly as before. The difference here is a style difference. And the idea is that this is going to improve the readability of our code. Because now the core algorithm that's really the purpose of the function is not so heavily indented. And the validation checks and the consequences for those validation checks failing are explicitly spelled out at the top of the function. We also have a nice separation from the validation code and the algorithm code, which is also kind of nice. Before, they were kind of intertwined and mixed together. So this is a style that many programmers like. I personally often like using this style. But that said, this is definitely a subjective style issue. If we save, compile, and run the program, functionality-wise, it's going to be the same as it was before. Now, there are some cases where people argue this style actually makes the code less readable. I'll post some links in the video description with people making arguments for both styles. I would suggest being pragmatic about applying the style, but it's a style that I've always liked myself, so I thought I would make a video on it. 
So this is the return early pattern in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.